Morning guys, how are you doing? It's another experience video today. This time, however, on the Corvette Grand Sport Collector Edition. This is owned by a good friend of mine called Archie Hamilton. All the links will be down below to his YouTube channel so you can see a bunch more of videos with this car. But as the usual experience videos, we're gonna start off by showing you around the car, then showing you the engine, giving you all the stats, moving on to the interior, and then Archie's very kindly gonna let me drive it with him in the passenger seat later so you'll be able to see both of us. But Let's kick it off first of all with how this car looks. Now, typical American car, huge long hood, and you're basically sat on the back wheels round back, but it is an absolutely stunning car in this gray color. Now then, the collector edition does mean that uh, you get these sort of stripes on the side and a blue interior, which I'll show you. Now, the Grand Sport is effectively a detuned Corvette Z06, where they've taken the supercharger out to improve reliability and also give you this slightly more attractable pack if you don't want a super, super hardcore, really high horsepower car. You can also take the roof off of this one, and it's very rare. There are only a thousand of these worldwide. There are only about five or so Grand Sports in the country, but collector editions, there are only two. One coupe and one on which you can take the roof off and this is that one. So you can take this roof off right here by removing it and you can put that in the back so you can have a sort of an open air experience. But starting off on the aesthetics inside this car is gray with the collector edition stripe and a matte black stripe down the hood, roof and boot, which looks very nice. And it's not that noticeable with this color, but it looks absolutely fantastic. Now Dub Customs have done a little bit of trickery on this car by adding blue accents to match the stripes. So for example, on the logo right there, it has an awesome little scoop here um, to get air into the engine, V8 uh, engine on this particular car. Now then, because it's the Grand Sport Collector Edition, you have the front here in carbon fiber, a nice front splitter, which looks awesome, but you do not want to hit that on a splitter. It's got the black grille as well, which looks awesome with all the black logos and slightly darkened lights, which Archie has done on this, which looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, you've got these big windscreen, wa uh, these big um, light washers here, which look slightly odd, but uh, you hardly notice them when you're driving along and it just looks very, very cool from the front. So this right here is my favorite angle of the car when you're standing sort of a three-quarter front angle it looks fantastic you've got these black magnificent wheels with actually wrapped um, brake calipers which glow in the dark on this car which is awesome dub customs have also lowered it slightly so that it looks a bit nicer because when you get it from the factory there's a massive panel gap between the wheel and the uh, and the actual arch and it looks slightly odd non-carbon ceramics you got steel brakes which are actually very effective and unless you're going on track loads you don't need carbon ceramics but massive brake calipers around the front on the side we've got some more carbon fiber here um, on this grill with your grand sport little logo there to remind you that you're driving something pretty special huge side skirts again finished off in carbon fiber now then the paint continues all the way down the side onto the wing mirrors which are also painted a bit of piano black finish on these a pillars um, which is actually the only bit of piano black on this car another air vent here which is beautifully sculpted i don't know if you can see that you don't really see it until you get up close and personal the door handle here where you reach in and open the door massive doors actually on this but really nice solid feeling i don't know if you can even just hear it from the noise that's a proper door. It's not like the Lotus, it feels slightly light and uh, less sort of comfortable and hardcore. Massive wheels on the back. Rear wheel drive this car so you can spin them up really easily. Uh, on the back, Archie's very nicely tinted this rear window which makes it look much more sleek. We also have the stripe which comes back here that you can see and it actually ends right around here on this rear wing which is basically pulled off straight of the Z06. Adds a lot of downforce and looks really nice. Tinted lights as well which are very cool, beautiful light design on these C7 um, Corvettes. 
uh, which I think this model year of the Corvette is where it all became sort of, it all made sense. It could finally compete with European cars. It's got a nice interior and it's got plenty of uh, comfort as well. So for example, down under here somewhere, there's a button which you open the boot on. And you have this huge boot. I mean, compared to the Lotus, this is easily about five times the size of the Lotus and looks absolutely awesome. And you can put so much stuff, including the, uh, the roof on the back of this. It's actually soft close as well, so you can just push it down and it closes automatically, which is very, very cool. We've got the blue Dub Customs logos as well with the blacked out Corvette down there. Quad exhaust, it has an interchangeable exhaust, um, which looks absolutely fantastic as well, all four of them inside. Now I'm just gonna open the hood, which is done on the driver's side here. Only left-hand drive for these, they don't do right-hand drive for the UK market, so that's why the steering wheel is on this side. Now to pull the hood open, there's just a little latch down here, which you pull, we'll come back to the interior in a tiny bit. Then if we go here, we have a naturally aspirated American V8 pushing out 466 horsepower, which makes this car do 0 to 16 3.6 seconds, which is absolutely mad. It's got lots of nice little details, like for example, the Corvette logo embossed into the hood right here in the front. Um, it's quite open. You can see that the engine is also really pushed back to give you more of a mid um, weight distribution. So it's a, uh, it's better around the track, for example. This car is awesome around the track, apparently. I've never experienced it. Archie hasn't taken it to the track yet, but apparently this car is fantastic around there. Now, 466 PS for over 600 Newton meters of torque, which is mad. This is a 2017 model. Now then on the inside, if you want to hop around the other side, this is where things get really exciting and where this steps the game up compared to the old Corvettes because this can now actually compete with the European market cars. This being the collector's edition, it's got this very fancy blue leather interior, which is, I don't even ever seen it on a Bugatti Veyron Vitesse, which is based out in America, and I thought it looked fantastic. And on this car, it looks equally as good. It's complemented also by blue stitching, quilted diamond stitching on the roof here, which is one of my favorite touches. Now to take the roof off, you just undo the latches here, and then it kind of just lifts out of place. Um, loads of buttons all over the place. So we're gonna start on the door. This car has the Bose sound system as well. Um, which is incredible. So the the main thing about this is it is basically a naturally aspirated American race car, but you could also use this every day. It's got super comfortable seats, as you can tell by having the, the double memory seats here. So you can put in, it's all electric, and then you can save your settings for yourself and, for example, your girlfriend or someone who would also drive the car. Um, you've got your Bose sound system, your window controls, uh, and then all of the, the side view mirror controls, info for your screen, uh, and all of that, which I'll show you once I've started the car up on the key right here, which is like a little card key, and really nice. You can open the boot, you can do the horn, uh, you can actually start the engine, and then do start, stop, uh, sorry, lock and unlock from the engine here. Little key engine, very, very nice. Now then, if we move on to the center console, this is an eight-speed automatic gearbox, which you can control through the plus and minus paddles on the steering wheel as well, which actually feel a bit plasticky. That they could have improved on and put some metal proper paddles because they're not the nicest feeling paddles. But you have a full Alcantara steering wheel, which is absolutely lovely with the Grand Sport in carbon fiber down here, reminding you once again that you're in something special. The blue logo as well. Obviously, you've got all of your windscreen and indicator stalks on the back. Um, and then well, we'll come to the dashboard in a tiny bit once we started the car. Let's move first on onto this area. You've got your engine start stop button. So foot on the brake and all you do is you press that. And the V8 fires into life. Gives this car a little bit of a shake as well, which is absolutely lovely. Here we have this awesome screen, which is also touched which is not touchscreen. I thought it was touchscreen. I was told it was touchscreen, but it isn't. It's all controlled by this knob right here. Um, you've got your radio controls and then all of your different controls. So you can put the screen up and down. You've got a little cubby behind it and a little USB input there. It's very cool that you can be able to do that because that's, that's where you could hide things you don't want people to find necessarily. You could just put, for example, your wallet or anything like that and no one would ever think of checking. You've got very nicely um, sort of embossed into the, uh, the carbon fiber here, these uh, climate control buttons, which are absolutely awesome. I'm just gonna switch the volume down. Radio, media, and home, and obviously front and back shortcut buttons here for the screen. Then you come down here, you've got all your climate controls. You've got heated and ventilated seats, three-way, 
which is very cool. Collector edition, your number, this is 444, which is actually a very cool number to have. Out of a thousand, as I mentioned earlier, but you got that little plaque, and so it's, they're actually numbered. They're not like Ferraris or anything like that, which don't even have a number. Down here, you got your little 12 volt power output. Uh, obviously, your gear selection. Uh, so you can put it in manual mode, drive, neutral, R, and park. Um, then, what, what else do we have? We have here, all of your uh, drive select modes. Um, so you can go from economy, tour, sport, track. So those are your four, and then weather, obviously, snow and wet. So you get your five driving modes. Um, also, traction control button down here, which you just hold once, and it goes down. So it's pretty easy, you just press that, and everything's off, and you can properly get this thing sideways, and your electric uh, park brake. Then a little bit of storage areas down here the glove box which is very very shallow actually um, and you have two USB keys uh, key input and another 12 volt outlet now oops sorry just hitting the camera uh, these seats are very cool you've got carbon fiber I mean there's carbon everywhere you've got the embossed shape of the car on the headrest they're finished in the blue uh, leather as well with Alcantara um, with the little holes for the ventilated and heated seats as well in the middle in black super comfortable they hold you in really nicely they're adjustable so you can adjust them to exactly how you want it um, and what's very cool in this car is everything is sort of uh, pointed towards the driver so everything is slightly angled towards the driver so you can see everything properly it's a really really nice finish and you've even got another little aircon um, control there for the passenger which is awesome round back just straight onto the boot there are more speakers and the rear visibility is actually surprisingly good it's a very slanted window where you can see out of it really nicely now then this is when things get super serious over here um, actually up here as well you've got, you've got your rear view mirror with all sorts of little buttons your SOS uh, and a few little displays which is pretty cool you don't see that on many cars and then your obviously your mirrors finished in Alcantara as well with the little light in them pretty awesome and more latches that you need to take off for the roof much easier roof to take off than in the Lotus now then around front here you've got your um, speedo which is finished off in both miles an hour and kilometers so they're adjustable so you can see uh, if ever you go to Europe take this car to Europe you know what kind of speed you're doing so that's all analog here for the fuel as well and your oil oil temps and everything like that in the middle however it's a digital dashboard now that's for your revs as you can see right now we're in a all weather mode but when you change that it switches up slightly so if i go into for example uh tour and then sport mode track mode right there uh, all you can see is that it changes slightly the little logo down there but then it also moves up your rev limiter and you can see when it goes up you can see your revometer going up and then leaving a little blue stripe for where you last rev which is pretty cool um, and yeah it's really nice to be able to have that screen there and sort of compete with yeah before Corvettes were always sort of behind in terms of technology and all of that stuff uh, compared to European cars whereas this is the first time that this properly came back I mean you got an 8 speed automatic gearbox you've got all sorts of buttons on the steering wheel all over the place and all the technology is now present but what I really want to know is how this thing drives so let's get Archie in the passenger seat and let's go for a drive <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for letting me have a go in your in your awesome Corvette. No worries, man. Grand Sport Collector Edition. Yeah, you've got it. So I'm going to whack it into manual mode as I just go down here, right? Yep, you just go down. So now it's on the paddles. Yeah, you're it's on got the an paddles. awesome head of display, mate. Yeah, I know. I can't really, really get that. Cool. You can't really get it across on camera. No, it's impossible it. to but film. It is, we um, would skip it. Before we skip it, but uh, yeah, it's it's a big car, isn't it? But how it's, adds it? It is big. It's a weird. It's kind of like when you drive an AMG GT or an SLS or something. It's a weird driving position. Yeah. Because you're sat on the rear wheels and you've got this huge hood in front yeah. of you. But it's just kind of a different kind of experience. And a lot yeah. of people go, "Oh, the paddle shift's really shit." Sorry, my language. Yeah. But um, the car is basically designed for the track. More yeah. designed for the track. So when you're, you'll see when you have. 
full revs, which I'll show yeah. you when you do. Yeah. Uh, the car goes into gear straight away. It's just that. There is a delay at slow speed. Slow speed, there's a delay. So you've got that is probably a negative side to the car. You've got to yeah. that's a negative side. Yeah. Um, but when you're on a track and stuff, everything's kind of instant. So. So downshift is faster than upshift. Downshift's up. I'm in sport upshift. mode. Where am I going? Am I going right? Uh, you're in sport mode. mode, right? That's good. Uh, you will go straight. Go straight. Straight. Yeah. Okay. We've got some cyclists. The main thing is how comfortable it is. Off it the is. Line. It is I mean, really. It is really comfy. This car. Right now, we, I've got my air-conditioned seat on. But the thing is, like, the car is. You've kind of, kind of got yourself a kind of sports car, supercar type car, but but it's. Designed for comfort, but also designed for like the track as well. So you've got your two kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have both. You can have both. So if you get your foot down, go on. Go. Keep revving, keep revving. <laughs> you, you were like, oh my god, there's a car coming the other way. I feel really close on this side. I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, a big car, isn't it? It's a big car. Uh, but you'll see, I'll show you when you. I'll, uh, and then all the rev lights kind of meet each other in the middle. Yeah, so it's kind of. it's. It, so it lights up and it tells you when to shift, it like flashes, it's like shift yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. Then you will see the car come into its own, so I'm interested to see what you think with it. The brakes are really nice. Yeah, the car. Strong brakes and you can sort of really feel what's going on. I mean, it's nearly 1500 kilos, this car, so it's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy, there's a yeah. lot to it. I mean, it was a 6.2 litre engine in, it's not the 6.2 litre in the front, yeah. Yeah, but uh, there's lots of things you can do to this car. I'm just happy with like how it is at the moment, but I yeah. think, I'm sure there is more things yeah. that we can do to the car. The, um, um, the ride's quite harsh. Yeah, so you're in currently you're in sport mode, left here. So you're in currently in sport mode. If we put it back to eco mode, what happens is, is the steering comes back to you. So the steering gets heavier the more you put it in more it, of aggressive uh, mode. Cause it's, I'm just going to put it back to sport for here. No, but that won't can, make, it won't make a difference it. to sound. Does it make if you hammer it, go on, go. Cool. See what I mean? Yeah, the shift is quick. It's quick, but it's not like it's. I, I guess because it's. 
heavier and the Lotus when you excite is really boom like it kicks oh, the you Lotus back. is quicker I think the Lotus is more instant instant power. yeah but this, this is this is the engine like boom. it's a lot it's got a higher top speed 181 yeah. is the top speed on this um, actually is this is higher top speed yeah, well, barely, I think. Barely, uh, well, that's interesting. Like 180. Right, so but that's yeah, so it'll keep going a bit more. Then you can feel that, like it's a bit, the initial wham from the Lotus is more impressive. Yeah. But then you can feel the power kind of shocks you a bit more at the higher and the faster you go. Yeah. Um, like I feel if you're at 120 and you try to put away, this will get away from the Lotus. Yeah, it's um, interesting. Whereas so. if you were at 20, the Lotus will probably get away. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of what I feel. But it's super nice. The main thing is also the comfort. I really, really like Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just an everyday kind of car as well yeah, yeah. Um, but for me I mean it's just getting it was just all about getting something a little bit different yeah. um, but I, I feel I'm still learning stuff about the car every yeah. day yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well obviously you haven't had it for very long haven't had it very long but yeah I mean you've got both sound system in here I mean that's what I would say positives are comfort yeah um the, the seats, the steering, the sound system, the sound insulation and stuff, the speed, yeah. and the exclusivity by having this in uh, in the UK yeah. is is a massive positive, I think. Um, negatives are the gearbox. Negatives are the gearbox. The gearbox yeah. is a negative yeah. um, if you're on it. If you're driving chill, it's completely fine. Uh, another negative maybe is, but I don't think this is a negative because you'd get used to it, is sort of the way you, you're sat in it. Because yeah. you're super low, I put my seat way up, but you're very low and you, it's a massive bonnet and yeah. it takes some getting used to. You've got to get used to the, how big the car exactly. is. Exactly. A, a few things as well feel a bit plasticky, a few yeah. of the buttons, but I mean, you're talking on about an 80, 90 grand car, you're not talking about a 150 grand you car. You've got to so remember, this is like the performance of those cars which are yeah, 100 so you have plus to make grand. A Somewhere. Yeah, so, but it's it's not badly built because you see all the top five. There, there are a few buttons where you feel like that. Well, things like, for example, the steering wheel is so nice. Yeah. Alcantara feels solid. Oh, you got carbon in it and all that stuff. No, it's really really nice. But I think there's just there's obviously pros and cons to every car, and I think yeah, yeah. I mean, I personally think for an American car, I think it's pretty well built. Oh, very um, well built. I, I think they've gone up. I, I think this, they've gone up. In over the last years, and how Corvette have been making, especially cars. between the C6 and the C7. Oh, massive! And the Huge. look of it, the look of it, you're getting, you're getting looks of a car like a Ferrari, sort of F12. Yeah. Like if you look at it, if you, if it had a ridiculous Very wrap Ferrari. on it, for a lot of lot cheap money a lot cheaper and also i think it just has the presence like around here people don't see them very often. around here people people really go mad with this car but no i really really like it i mean we're gonna end the video outside but thank you for letting me drive man Have it is Anytime. awesome Anytime. congratulations congratulations yeah <laughs> great you can't get your words out and that is it the experience video with the grand sport collector's edition honestly i'm not just saying this because you're a good mate of mine this is one of my favorite cars we've done the experience video on really and it's kind of made me be like is the lotus a little bit too hardcore <laughs> because driving a car like this and driving and being able to daily it a bit more and actually be comfortable driving it is super super nice so i really enjoyed that thank you so much Anytime, for mate. letting no, me drive i mean you can't really compare the two the lotus no I mean, they're completely different i think the lotus is more built like supercar yeah. hardcoreness i think yeah. a corvette is really a kind of car which is meant for dailying yeah um i ha i haven't i haven't dailyed it but i mean you've got the a45 if we turn around right here if you haven't watched this channel before the lotus we're talking about is that one right there which is mine and then that's archie's a45 daily driver but yes no i know what you mean they are completely different two different cars but um for, two, i was skeptical cool getting a car like this because it's an american car people sometimes they have the reputation of not building good cars but i think the way they are coming along in the last few years um, and the way they're going to go, I yeah. think it's, uh, it's, it's getting exciting. more impressive. So we'll Congratulations to you for this Thank car. Thank you very much. Very cool. And, we'll, uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, remember to subscribe to Archie's channel, subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you very soon. Cheers, uh, bye bye. Hey, yo. Quick cap saying it, Saturday in the mouth. Snow Juliet.